tuned to the end of this video where we will show you how we make this historic soft drink called Shrub. Welcome back to 1834 Restoration House. This is a short special edition. We have some great news for you. A lot of people have been asking about how my job is going. And the truth is, I haven't been there yet. I'm actually supposed to start on Monday, two days from now. And so we're really excited about that. I hope it's gonna be a great experience and we'll keep you posted as things go. We've been getting up extra early mm. so that we can prepare for his schedule because it's gonna be an early one. In January, we had gotten rid of our post office box because we thought we were leaving the area, but it turns out we're not. So we went down the other day to get a post office box. We walked into the post office, you know, being a small town, they tend to know everybody. Yeah. And he was surprised to see us because he thought we were leaving and we'd been gone a while. But I asked him if the post office box was still available and could we have it back again? <laughs> and so he, he turns and looks over his shoulder and he says, yep, it's all yours. So we got the keys and we gave him some money and now we have our post office box again. So if you guys want to correspond or send anything or whatever, this right here is where the post office box is. In the past year, we've had several people ask about the tractor. And just the other day, we had a commenter ask for more specific information about it. And we haven't really talked much. We've used it in several videos and it's been very helpful, but I thought I'd just take a moment and just talk about what it is and why we have it and why we chose this one. So we tend to buy places that have acreage and when you have that much land, it really is helpful to have some machinery to take care of it because if you're trying to use a push mower on two acres, it's going to take you a long time. It could take hours. In fact, uh, we actually did that years ago. We had a place with two acres and I couldn't get through the whole place in one sitting. I had to go and do it over several days because it was just so much work. And we realized at that point, we need a tractor. And uh, we had another place with 10 acres we couldn't mow the place uh, because we could only do just just around the yard and that was it. Again, we realized we need a tractor. Well, now that we have 2.3 acres here, it's the same scenario. In order to mow this place, it takes an awful lot of machinery power. Also, to try to clean up a place like this, you really need to have something that's going to help you out because otherwise you'd be schlepping stuff from way, way back there all the way up to the front so that the city can collect it and haul it away and it's a lot of work, a lot of work. Uh, hauling bricks, hauling soil, things like that, really is so much easier with a tractor. We've always liked the John Deere. We thought it was a good product, and we like the fact that it's made in America, and that's a big thing for us. Uh, anywhere you go in any small town, uh, there's gonna be a John Deere dealer nearby. You know, certainly no more than, say, 30 minutes away, unless you're, like, way, way out somewhere. But the fact that it's made in America, the fact that you got local support, they're not terribly expensive. One of the things we looked at was they have these things called lawn tractors, and they're basically in the, uh, I think they're the X series. They go all the way up to the 700s. And yes, you can get a diesel powered lawn tractor. It's basically an oversized riding lawnmower. Yeah, you can put attachments on it like buckets and things like that. But the thing is, by the time you get one of those and you fully load it up, you're almost at the price of a compact utility tractor. And so that puts us up into a different category. Well, the basic entry-level compact utility tractor is the 1023E, uh, which is a 23-horse tractor. It's, it's a very basic entry-level. Um, works good for some people. The next one up from that is the 1025R, which is a better tractor in almost every regard. Costs a little more. But then we got to looking at that and we realized the 1025 has small wheels in the back and even smaller wheels in the front. And what that does is it compresses all that weight on a very small surface area. And when you're running on a place like this where it tends to be moist a lot of the year, that's not good because you can sink in. So we looked at the 2025R, which is the one we actually decided on. And one of the reasons we like that tractor better is because the rear wheels are bigger. You spread that weight over a bigger area and it's not so prone to sink into the ground. The front wheels are larger as well. The other thing we liked about it is that it has a much bigger 
hydraulic system. That gives you more lift capacity on the loader, it gives you more horsepower on the mower belly, and the PTO shaft back here has more horsepower to it. The tractor comes with basically just the tractor, and that is this. You can add on a front end loader, and most of the tractors that the dealers sell already have loaders attached to them because they're so useful and most everybody wants one. But it is possible to buy the tractor without. Down here we have a belly mower. This is a 60 inch mower. Uh, I can tear through this yard in record time. It takes me about 30 minutes to get this entire acreage mowed with this thing. Now try doing that with a riding mower or worse yet, a push mower. So that's a huge, huge benefit. And one of the neat things about this is that that can be taken off easily. You just undo a couple of things and then you literally drive the tractor backwards off and over it. And now the tractor is free of the belly mower. We keep it on most of the time because most of what we do is mowing. This is the loader here. It's fully hydraulic. And I believe it's also a 60 incher. And it's controlled by this joystick right here. So I can, I can operate it. See, like that. It's fully articulating. I can, I can curl it up. I can set it up and down. And I can even take it off. So when I mow, I don't think I've ever shown this, but I can take the bucket off by releasing these two pins right here, set the bucket on the ground, and then put the loader down a little bit. It disengages, and then I can just drive away, leaving the bucket behind. I'm going to demonstrate how easy it is to take off the bucket. It comes equipped with a Yanmar diesel engine. I think it's three cylinders, it's 25 horsepower. And I love having that diesel power because it's much stronger than a gasoline engine. Uh, yes, fuel costs more, but diesel engines are more economical to run. And this one holds five gallons of fuel and we could probably get, I don't know, maybe a month's worth of work out of it before we have to refuel it. One of the things that's really great about the John Deere tractors is that it has a hydrostatic drive. And what that means is that the, the wheels are not turned by a transmission, but they actually have a hydraulic motor which operates by pushing hydraulic fluid through it. And that makes it real easy to drive because all you have to do is push on one pedal to go forward, push on another pedal to go backward. So even somebody who's kind of, shall we say, transmission challenged can easily drive one of these things. It has four-wheel drive, and I can engage it or disengage it with this handle right here. The mower deck is also hydraulically actuated, so I can use this handle here, and I can lift the mower up and down. And this handle also controls the three-point hitch on the back. So if you have, say, a tiller, that's how you would raise and lower the tillers with the same handle here. This bar here is a safety bar. It's called rollover protection system. And if the tractor should flip, what it does is it keeps the tractor from rolling over upside down and avoid crushing the driver. And of course we have the safety flag, which means it's roadworthy. I could drive it down the city streets if I wanted to. I've got full lighting. If I wanted to do some rototilling, I could hook it up to this three-point hitch, hook up to the power takeoff or PTO shaft here to power the thing and I can go rototill. People have asked about, can you have a excavator put on here? The answer is yes. There are plenty of attach points. John Deere does make an excavator. The thing is, it costs an awful lot of money. And for the amount of money you pay for that thing, you could rent excavators and trenchers and things like that uh, many, 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 many times before you could ever cover the cost of one of these. So we opted not to get that option. Tractor controls are a little different than a car. Your brake is over here, and your forward and reverse controls are over here on the right-hand side with your feet. And after you drive it a little bit, it becomes intuitive. 
before that it gets comical. We have a two-speed transmission control. We can go low range if we want to just do something really low and slow, like mowing or tilling. If we need something a little faster or if we're just moving from place to place, we can pop it into high speed and then just go faster. Um, I drove a larger version of this several years ago and it could top out about 14 miles per hour. This one here does not have a speedometer, so I have no idea how fast it goes. And we also have the PTO control here, which we can send power to the middle. We can send it backwards or we can send it to both. So that's a basic overview of the tractor. We like it. It's been really good for us and we've gotten a lot of work done. Now let's go join Jeannie in the kitchen and she has something else for you. Shrub with a B is a very ancient soft drink. It's been around for thousands of years. It only has three ingredients. It's got honey, apple cider vinegar. Bragg's is the only one that really works. It's got with mother. You've got to have that with mother if you want all the healthy nutrients to go in it. And then we have berries. We prefer the blackberries, the strawberries, anything with a strong flavor because it balances out the apple cider vinegar, which you know, a vinegar is a strong flavor. That's why you need a strong flavored fruit. Strawberries works great and blackberries. That's our favorite too. And what we're gonna do, I've already washed mine berries. We're gonna smash them up. And the goal is to get about a third of a jar. When I've got it leveled out, I have two marks here. That's where my fruit is. So I want two marks of honey and two marks of apple cider vinegar. When you put the berries in, put all of the fruit, the seeds and all, it's okay. We will filter it out later. And then my apple cider vinegar, my mark. Equal parts. And when you do this, use a plastic lid, not a metal lid of any kind. So we shake it up pretty good. Now I'm gonna set this on the counter for three days. And every time I come across it, I'm going to shake it up. I don't want the honey sitting down at the bottom. I want it to blend in together. After three days, we're gonna strain this, take out all the berries and the chunks and everything. And the juice that's left over is our concentrate. The concentrate you're gonna wanna put in the fridge you don't want it to ferment anymore, <laughs> okay? It'll get really strong if you leave it on the counter continuously. And when you go to use it, you only put a little bit in your drink. Whether you're using water or seltzer water, you can use soda water, you can try it in fruit juices if you like. Um, you can put it in a lot of different drinks, but it is an apple cider vinegar, so don't forget that. It does have a strong flavor, which is why we mix it with a strong berry. You wanna mix to taste. Start off really easy until you get to the taste that you like. Mike and I both like different concentrate amounts. So it is particular to each person, but it is our favorite drink in the summer and we're very happy to share it with you guys. We hope that answers your questions. If you have any others, feel free to leave them in the comments. We do read the comments and we try to respond to them as much as we can. Thank you for watching 1834 Restoration House Short. Short. Short.